My name is Angel Gonzalez, pronouns him, he, they, ella, and I'm an EDD candidate in community college leadership at San Diego State University. Hi, everyone. My name is Luz Burgos Lopez, she, her, hers, ella. I'm a doctoral student in the New York School of Education at the University of Connecticut. Hi, everyone. Eric Felix. I'm an assistant professor at San Diego State University. Hello, everyone. My name is Kenny Nienhauser. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Connecticut. And we comprise a special issue editorial team who put the special issue together. We also co-authored an introductory article, which we've titled Policy Implementation as a Tool for Advancing Equity in Community Colleges. So Eric, would you mind uh, please begin uh, by telling us impetus for the special issue, some factors that the special issue editorial team encountered in doing this work, and a brief description of the five articles that are comprised in our special issue. Yeah, thanks for that, Kenny. I'm so happy to be just sharing out the special issue that we've worked on for the last year. I know Kenny and I have had conversations at different conferences about the power of policy implementation and the ways that we need to critically examine how implementation occurs in community college knowing that racially minoritized students, first-generation students, those that face disadvantage throughout their educational trajectory find themselves in community college. And the ways that policies um, and their enactment can be seen as opportunities to achieve uh, educational equity. And so through these conversations, we reached out to Education Policy Analysis Archives and uh, they accepted our idea and it came to fruition with this special issue that focused on the ways that researchers examine policy implementation to advance equity in community college. We wouldn't have guessed that we would be living under a pandemic, being scholars trying to advance our research, trying to write, trying to live out our work, knowing that so much is going on in our world, affecting us personally, collectively, and societally, knowing that uh, many of the individuals who submitted an abstract in March of 2020, we're not able to advance their scholarship given the uncertainty, the chaos, and the ways that our lives were disrupted, not just as academics, but as, as individuals and communities. So we wanna acknowledge that. But at the same time, we are very excited to announce that we have five papers in this special issue. And we called on those scholars to center their work to examine how policy implementation and reform efforts in community college can lead towards more equitable conditions. Our hope was to showcase research that critically investigated the ways policies are enacted in various settings in the community college context. Along with this introduction, the special issue includes five articles that explores topics like tuition-free programs and their ability to deliver on the promise of access and equity, the development of degree reclamation strategies that hope to support those that have some college but no degree population, helping them finish um, their educational credential, how transfer articulation agreements benefit racially minoritized communities, institutional efforts to try to expand the success in STEM programs in community college, and the role of race conscious leadership in policy implementation. Angel, can you share a brief overview of some elements we've included in our co-authored article? Thank you, Dr. Felix, for that introduction. One of the main things we wanted to do was provide an overview of the policy implementation literature uh, to frame this special issue. We thought it was important to highlight the various generations of policy implementation literature and how it segues into higher education, its limitations and opportunities. We provide an overview of top-down policy implementation, bottom-up policy implementation, and third-generation uh, hybrid policy implementation. Policymakers and scholars alike have been examining how policy is carried out and what factors impact implementation. Much of the literature, however, is focused on policy itself or the outcome, and more needs to be done enhancing the work during the implementation process. This is where third generation policy implementation comes in, which is focused on theory building of policy implementation. As higher education scholars, we believe we've done a subpar job in embracing the study of policy implementation, understanding policy implementation in our practice, and embedding, embedding criticality and analysis as key competencies of our profession. We urge that equity must be central in policy implementation for higher education scholars and practitioners across all sectors. Kenny, can you please share with us how and why our field of higher education, and particularly community colleges, should focus on policy implementation? 
Yeah, thank you, Ankin. So to, to build off of the, the great ideas that Ankin just shared with us, in our article, what we argue is that the higher education landscape is in dire need of a revitalized and deeper understanding of factors that shape how policies are implemented. So we begin this argument by outlining that there's a paucity of research in higher education that really sort of centers on policy implementation. So we engaged in a review of the journal articles across three of the most cited journals in higher education and those three journals that are focused in community colleges and found a really dearth uh, amount of research that is focused on policy implementation. But we found that especially pronounced in the higher education journals. So what we do is we provide a call in this co-authored piece for us to expand the research landscape to consider and center the importance of policy implementation research in the work of those individuals such as researchers, editors, and funders. So in this expansion, however, we argue that we should be uplifting the strengths of our community college systems, institutions, nearby communities, leaders, staff, and students, while highlighting the challenges and opportunities that, may, that they may face when implementing policies as recipients of policies or both. Next, what we do is we devote a section to our colleagues who are engaged in implementing policies. As former or current full-time higher education student affairs professionals, we understand a critical role practitioners have in addressing systemic institutional inequities. As such, we call for our higher education leaders and practitioners to critically reflect upon their current roles and shift their lenses in understanding that they too are policy actors across the policy implementation process. So we recognize, however, that we do very little to support practitioners development and work as implementers or implementation agents. And the dwindling resources makes this task even more challenging. Next, Luce, would you mind sharing some insights or highlights about why we included about uh, community colleges? Yes, thank you, Kenny. So due to the open access admission policies, um, community colleges have been front and center in conversations about educational attainment for many students, specifically for racially minoritized students. Although community colleges enroll the highest share of undergraduate students, the completion and outcome remain scarce and drastically lower when disaggregated by race and gender. One of the many challenges that impact community colleges' ability to advance equity-based initiative is the sector's funding model, which continue to under-support community colleges, which ultimately translates into direct disproportionate impact to minoritized students. And this is specifically important when we're thinking about equity in the community college sector, along with policy. While a number of policies have been implemented to increase the access and address inequity, for historically marginalized and excluded populations, they continue to experience barriers to access, degree attainment, and hostile campus environment. Therefore, what we argue from an equity framework, we must collectively ask how our implementation of policies can reduce harm, revise abusive systems, and increase the support for individuals who have been historically excluded from higher education. Why is this important? Because as highlighted by Harper in 2019, many policies that are race-driven are embedded within mainstream racist hegemonic frameworks that consistently question the worthiness of African-American students as educated citizens and their legitimacy of their presence in higher ed. And we can expand that based on the literature for all um, historically racialized populations. So with that, I want to pass it on to Angel, who will provide us with our closing remarks. Thank you so much, Luz. We hope that this introduction piece helps frame this special issue and the role of policy implementation moving towards equity in community colleges. We would like to thank each scholar whose work is included in this special issue. We appreciate your scholarship and its ability to help us think more deeply about how the intersections of policy implementation and equity are manifested in the community college sector. We also want to acknowledge those scholars whose work was unable to make it into this issue, 
primarily due to COVID-19. We encourage you to continue to pursue this area of inquiry, and we look forward to learning from your important work. We would like to thank the Education Policy Analysis Archives editorial team for their encouragement and support in bringing the special issue to reality. Thank you to all the reviewers who provided thoughtful feedback during the review process.